Welcome to the first infrastructure SIG of 2021. Uh, I posted the agenda in chat. Please do add any new business. Um, and we'll jump in. Um, I imagine since we've had a bit of a break, there won't be a lot of updates, uh, but we will go through those. And um, I think as we start a new year, it'd be good to try and identify which things uh, we really should focus and try and put as a priority um, on our roadmap to get completed. Uh, we are approaching another release uh, with branching in uh, two weeks. Uh, so we do have what maybe a, a month or so period where we uh, can make changes, uh, but we have to be very careful about those changes so that we do not uh, break the break the release stream and stress Tomer out. I made this uh, time around. All right, you heard him. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> um, first one is uh, a rack space migration. Uh, we're down to two, three uh, entities. Uh, we got the Jenkins server, um, and then we've got the current combined Foreman and Puppet server. Uh, so <clears throat> let's start on the Jenkins side. Uh, has there been any work in the realm of either Jenkins migration or just Jenkins cleanup or updates that are worth sharing? Not from my side. I haven't had time. All right. Um, same question for Foreman or Puppet Server. Uh, anything related there? Same answer. Um, yeah, I think for both counts, if everyone, everyone else, or anyone else has time, um, feel free to take over. Um, otherwise, I'd try to keep my name on it. Okay. Uh, if anybody would like to take on tackling either of those, like, like you said, uh, you can speak now or you can just go edit things and change the name on it. Um, uh, Redmine migration. Um, just a reminder, we, it runs on Scaleways. Uh, the sponsoring there ceased. Uh, we talked about migrating this to OSU OSL. And then there was also a someone threw out, could this be a candidate for Conova, depending on where that sponsorship uh, was going, uh, which I think we have further down in the list. But we could talk now if there's anything related there. There is only the related thing that I pinged them again, like end of last week, and it seemed to have been semi forgotten in between the holidays. So my my my, my friend uh, promised me to poke his team lead, who is in charge for for such things. Um. Just a note, I think when we talked about these other two, the Jenkins and the Foreman Puppet server, last time we talked, it was right in the midst of all of the EL8 CentOS stream business. Um, and we punted those back to, let's just stick with EL7 while that business gets figured out. Um, on the red mine, we also had upgraded EL8. Do we want to change our guidance? there for whenever this migration occurs or stick with just going to uh, stream. Given um, Redman, 
itself runs in the container? No, I, I'm wrong. Redmine is not a container. It's on the host OS. Yeah. You may be thinking of this course. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of this course. Uh, disregard what I was about to say. But let's still go with ELE, even though my comment doesn't apply. I think for us, it doesn't really matter if it's stream or rel 8. If we have a good plan for rel 8, that might be more stable for us and less risky. Given how critical Redmine is, I think that would be a, a good option. Um, today, they announced a block with the first plans. It might be good to hold off till there's a plan that we as an open source project can use. Because I think right now they only have personal developer uh, licenses. But they announced that it would be, they would be working for uh, on plans for other cases. Great, uh, moving down. Uh, <clears throat> Borman Infra Cleanup, the CI directory. Um, you're, I can at least say that uh, the first part of this, job and Jenkins that runs JGB to populate all jobs, that uh, I think we actually merged, got done. Uh, And I have a mind when I get some free time to, now that that part's done, to go back uh, to visit the other parts of this, uh, which are around adding that job that populates the builds uh, and then starting to clean up uh, the job generation since we have some duplicated job generation now that I updated that Jenkins job. Uh, and to my knowledge, I haven't seen any errors or problems with the update to the job, um, other than Evgeny I think, fixing one problem that I may have introduced. Or maybe it was just a comment that I got wrong. I can't remember. But it seems to be running well. Yeah, it, it runs fine. I think the thing you got wrong was the type of credential. But once that was fixed, it was fine. Um, since I've been working on this one, uh, and you have your name attached to a few things, I'm happy to put my name on this one. Um, use of Jenkins files by repos. Any updates there? No. Um, you're archiving old Debian releases. Same old nope. New year, same old nope. But somehow um, it's those nice to have things get pushed away for some reason. This was one we identified if we did, it would speed up. Debian yeah. builds for PRs and releases. Yeah. Well, not the builds, the publishing, but um, this is like it would speed up the pipeline. So uh, a worthy candidate to try and find some time to do, maybe not, maybe try and convert it from a nice to have to a should have so we get faster releases. Uh, you already talked about the new sponsor. You poked him. Now we're waiting. Uh, we have auto building Debian on PR merge. Uh, has to do with rewriting Debian build jobs. 
we don't have an owner for that. And I assume, therefore, we also don't have any updates on it. I've not seen anything happening here, yeah. CDN for the website. No, we still need to figure out those lock things and then doing that. Uh, this line here, the CDN log request. Yes. I think, was it last time we talked about these, Tomer wasn't here, and so we put these ideas out here to see if they would satisfy his current no, needs. I was here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. okay. As long as slash RSS gets logged somehow, um, I don't mind. Um, I think, though, it's well, probably lower priority now since the website seems to be much faster than it was when we put this up. The reason we wanted to see the internet in the first place was that it was really slow. Yeah. Um, so still a worthwhile change, it's just lowered in priority. Um, then we have the rebuilding of uh, Koji. Um, no owner there. Um, currently, any known updates here? Um, the only updates I have is I think I found some playbooks that will help streamline the build process of the server and the builders. Um, is there any uh, short-term work we need to undertake so that I stop getting emails from Koji that we are almost out of space? Um, we could probably handle the date, the migration, um, and or utilize the mirror solution across, um, basically using, uh, what are my words? Uh, using the actual repo mirrors for repos instead of pairing them locally, that takes up most of the storage. So if we delete the local repos and just use CDN repos for the builders. I think we also talked about possibly cleaning up some really old builds from Koji. We have still stuff like from form and all point something there. If I remember correctly, but I might be misremembered. I mean, not really the same thing, but still. Door to 26, probably also, or 29 is still in there as well. That's pretty outdated by now. Yeah, agreed. It's usually the, the doors that cause problems. But we actually still build for Fedora 29, so. But we could probably just as easily switch to yell it up, Fedora project.org repo, and get rid of them. Probably, yeah. Yeah. And uh, when you. Go ahead. Uh, I was just checking. When you say we still build for Fedora, did you mean in nightly or that we have an active release that was shipped with Fedora client bits? I mean, nightly. We've been keeping it around to switch over to whatever future Fedora ELN would have been, but we never did. 
you can drop everything before 29 for sure. Well, we can't drop 29 even though it's unsupported. Well, we should also drop it from a built-in for then. Yeah. And personally, I would like the support for Dover at least for the client bits. Uh, but if we can use the direct mirrors instead of mirroring it locally, that would be perhaps a good use case. Yeah. I think they made it easier to build for Fedora from 33-odd. Without having to deal with the whole module thing. Cool. All right. Uh, There's also, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we have a large storage device in Koji to handle all the items. And on the same storage device, we also have a huge swap partition. I think we could also reduce the swap partition and extend the actual storage part of it. No. Um, the swap partition comes with the actual image. The storage that we're running low on is an actual external disk that's added to it, not part of the actual VM. Too good to be true. All right. <clears throat> um... We added oops, uh, CentOS Stream last time. This was a hot topic. Um, what did we, let me refresh myself. Uh, it, so what we just, there's also one other, um, the Netway server that we have, they sponsor a Jenkins node. And they mentioned that the infra that is running on now is going to be phased out. So we need to migrate it to their OpenStack infra. That's probably also good to mention. Uh, the um, netways node. Too many, too many something ways. There's more ways than, than you want. Um. Is it what? Is it one Jenkins node or two we run over there? Uh, one. Uh, and I think you guys, just because I missed all talk of it, uh, just need to recreate Jenkins node in their OpenStack environment. Uh, Is that something where we have access to just go spin it up or we have to yeah. put in a ticket? I have access and the last time I tried, I ran into in some issue and I need to go check back if that's still an issue. Okay. Do you want me to go and try and ignore your old issue? Well, the old issue was that I didn't get networking. So if you get networking, go ahead. Yeah. And otherwise, you'll see it. <coughs> and I think I also tried to um, connect it to Jenkins directly via the form and open uh, or the form and form directly via the form and open stack plugin, and I think that did work. So it was just a VM that was actually being created that uh, got wrong, uh, didn't get routing or something. Uh, do you know if there's like a decommissioning timeline or when they're planning to drop that old infrastructure that we would need to do this by to keep? They said the next 
within next weeks. But we don't lose too much capacity for that, so it's not no not that bad. And we told them that they can nuke the old machine whenever they want to. Gotcha. Um. Yeah, and there's some cleanup, post cleanup that I want to do. Um, in the puppet manifest that we have, there's some alt edge cases that we have just for that one single node, and if we provision it cleanly, then we don't have that. But that's not critical. Um, okay, uh, there, I think there was a, a post, post, post this is last time discussion on stream, uh, just to recap the things that we talked about last time where, um, that we needed to pick a target release for CentOS stream uh, to get some, be able to do testing ahead of time to really aim for it, not just try and uh, cram it into the next release. Um, and that we would aim, since uh, we need to get Catello online on ELA2, that we would release it on CentOS 8 with the 4.0 release. Um, and then work at adding stream to our pipeline tests, uh, work at poking them to get vagrant boxes available so we're not out in the cold with no way to test or having to do it ourselves. Um, and keep an eye on, uh, we kind of just said we would keep an eye on stream or we did further migrations uh, and support. Um, any additional thoughts or comments around that? Yeah. I'd sort of assume that we would want to target, um, so we're coming up on branching, it gives us another development cycle. We'd want to aim for the next form and release, assuming we can get all of the assets in place um, to work on adding it to our pipeline tests, start to build our confidence in it and feel like we can release uh, with support for it. Um, while also working on some of the problems that we already face with uh, the amount of the, the size of our test matrix, and the effect it has on our uh, pipelines uh, where we run into concurrency issues in ci.centos.org. Uh, which I think is the topic of the new business line. Look at that nice segue. <clears throat> Um, I know there's been some discussion on this. Uh, how about uh, somebody other than me give a quick description of the problem? I know I kind of just said it, but maybe state it a little more clear than I did. I can go and try. So essentially, our current setup is to have a Jenkins node owned by uh, CICentos.org. And behind that, there is an infrastructure where we can request machines. To my understanding, those are bare metal machines, actually, but I'm not completely sure. And there is a limit of how many machines we can have under our control in parallel. I think that limit is eight. 
not totally sure, but I think it's eight. And each matrix entry in our current release pipeline, so um, an entry is install on CentOS 7 or upgrade on CentOS 8 and the same on Debian. Um, it consumes currently one machine and then executes everything in parallel. If we count CentOS 7, install CentOS 7, upgrade CentOS 8, install CentOS 8, upgrade, and the same on Debian, we end up on exactly eight. No, must be more. Maybe the limit is six. Maybe the limit is six, yeah, whatever. So um, the usual scenario is whenever we do a full release, like a stable release, then two jobs will get essentially rejected because there is no space in our quarter for, for them to launch. And the original idea was to have the release pipeline split up the way we have our nightly pipeline split up, split up because those don't face the same issue because they run Debian and RPM tests, not in parallel, but back to back essentially. So you use schedule CentOS, and if that succeeds, you schedule Debian after that, or as we are. Doesn't really matter. I think the other option is, uh, well, there were two other suggestions, I think. One was to simply drop a couple of combinations. For yeah. example, only test upgrading on one Debian and installing on the other Debian. Yep. Um, and another was to one install uh, first and only after that passes on the upgrade. So instead of doing eight in parallel, it would be four in parallel and four more, assuming all of the installs passed. has the benefit of failing past if the install is broken completely. Um, and the downside of taking a bit longer if everything is good. Which I guess also the first proposal has the same uh, issue. Um, and also something we might want to think is that at some point we may want to add another distro to the mix. Um, probably, so we could. Uh, yeah, uh, Ubuntu 20.04, we are already quite late with supporting it. So I, we do have some fix in installer now that should make it possible to support it. So that's coming. Uh, Debian 11 is going to be frozen soon, so that's coming. Center stream, maybe, if we, or oh, well, whatever we. So, is there a way we could get a higher limit from Center CI, or are they already at capacity? I personally didn't ask, but I think Pulp asks them to access the, those emissions too, and God essentially refused that there is not enough capacity. We could also mm -hmm. explore how big those machines actually are, and if we can run parallel tests on a single machine, essentially. Like running both install and upgrade on the same physical metal. I think for Debian based, that would probably work because it's a lot lower in requirements. 
Um, so you can definitely lower the box sizes for those. And also, vanilla form and tests are, don't run uh, with a proxy, so that's already a lot lower. So yeah, we are wasting a lot of capacity on those boxes. I definitely think that you could do Debian both install and upgrade on the same physical machine. I can yeah, try okay. exploring that. I think they're 32 gigabyte uh, memory machines that we asked for. I think that's like the, like there's other size machines in the pool as well. Um, I suppose that's an option is for some things we look for, we try to combine them and look for a bigger request, a bigger machine. Um, I don't, you know, we won't know really Im availability impacts until we try it. Similar to when we tried to use, I think, EL8 machines and then realized that they didn't at that time have very many of them. So we were just sitting waiting for one to come available. <coughs> Um, but yeah, I also get the impression that they are well at capacity and we are also seeing part of why we see this problem is they might be, I think, I feel like they've lowered the limit because I, when we originally started this, I'm pretty sure the number was 10 parallel machines at a time. And it definitely doesn't feel like 10 anymore. It's bit that it's 10, but we're spinning up to at the same time and running into the limit there or something like that. So some finish and some don't. Or is it always that we have a couple of failures? It seems pretty, cons it seemed consistent last time I was doing releases yeah. myself. Mm -hmm. Same, I think. Oh wait, don't we spin another machine for Smoker as well? It's a it's VM. another VM. So that would explain where well the 10 went to, I guess. No, it's a VM on the bare metal machine. It's part of the set of Vagrant boxes running on a single machine. Yeah, so what we do today is we get a we... physical machine. On that, we run VMs. And the VM set is typically a foreman and a smoker. And in the case of Catello, we also have a separate proxy. But those. Don't count the Duffy limits, they are just on the one Duffy machine that you get. Mm. Okay. Um, and yeah, I just looked at 32 gigabytes of RAM. Yeah, they don't. <clears throat> I've never seen them publish the, the stats on the pool of machines anywhere um, to be able to look up and see. Okay, they have this many thirty-two gigabyte machines, this many like you know, bigger machines. Um, so that would be a trial and error, as far as I know, to figure out if we could reliably request bigger machines. Um, yeah, that's another option, which is take bringing back some of the jobs to our own info. We don't have a good place to run VMs. We used to run that on Rackspace. There we actually used the OpenStack provider to spin up machines in OpenStack, provision them, and run them. But that's no long, uh, that's no longer an option. Uh, is it fair to assume that uh, if we complete our migration to OSU OSL, we'd basically be tapped out on resources there? Probably, yes. And we, we may be able to request some, but 
Um, one thing I would be concerned about is security, that if we use the same account to create those test machines as actual production machines, that is a risk. And we always had that risk in a black space, which always concerned me. And I was glad, happy to remove that. We should not introduce the same risk again. And maybe you can solve that via permissions, but we couldn't at the space. Um, okay. With the couple minutes we have left, one thing I wanted, exercise I wanted for us to do was <clears throat> we have a, a, a decent list of items um, <laughs> and to uh, try and uh, I'm actually interested just build a set of sort of a prioritization around it uh, so that we as a group and community can look at it and go kind of go, Oh yeah, this is what we should, they should definitely solve this problem. Then probably this problem, this problem uh, because there are some that I feel like are either on a timeline or <clears throat> have impacts to our process. Uh, the one we case in point, the one we were just discussing uh, our testing limits. So, uh, I'm going to kind of put that at the uh, top of that list there. Um, uh, I'll, and so I'll give my own thoughts too, but I'm just going to open it up to like uh, what people think or would like to see as items that we try and prioritize in order due to either time constraints or benefit to the community. So I think CDN for the website is probably at the bottom okay. of that list. Um, and I think auto building Vivian would make Evgeny and Patrick's life a bit easier, but I don't know what do you think. The rack space migration is mostly about saving budget. I don't know how much we pay them right now. But if it's more than it would cost to spend the time migrating, um, then we should do it. But depends on the cost, I guess. If it's cheaper to keep it on rack space, then spend the uh, work hours of migrating it. Um, I'm not sure it's worth the effort, honestly. But that's a question of how much that is. It's a question of how much it is and how much uh, we are requested to do it by the people footing the bill. <laughs> yeah, well, the people footing the bill can also, well, yeah, well, right now we're paying X dollars to migrate. It would cost us two X dollars. That's a two year old buy. Um, should we do it? Okay. You know what? Why don't I just do this? You know, simple things. Simple things that make your life easier. You know, watching me constantly scroll. Uh, I'm guessing stream should be a decently high priority item. Did you put it above or below 
these Debian ones. Above. Oh. And personally, I switch those Debian to. Like the order of them? Yeah. Okay. Within the Rackspace migration, I would also say that Jenkins is more important than the reformance server. Okay. Uh, we are at 10 o'clock. I will add the last item here. We can always uh, uh, ch change them up next time or in the meantime uh thank you everybody for your time thank you for the updates for coming and also thank you for working on this stuff and making improvements to our infrastructure and project thank you and goodbye bye, bye. bye. thank you